guys and welcome back to my youtube channel it's me your girl varista neze and this is nezeville if you're just seeing me for the first time a quick introduction my name is chineze adaize i am a banker a barista a youtuber a wifey and a mom of three soldiers <laughs> so in this channel we do a lot we talk about marriage we talk about law parenting banking trending issues we do vlogs we talk about in fact everything fun educative and enlightening you would find on this channel so if you're not subscribed what in the heavens are you waiting for hit that subscribe icon and join the fam and do not forget to turn on your notification bells so when i make a post you will be the first to know so today's video is one of those trending issues trending topic videos where i'm going to be giving you guys facts and critical analysis of a trending serious issue and you guys know that due to my knowledge as a barista i'll give you the best insight into all those kind of things so without dragging this intro much further let us go right into the video now a few days back a news broke out on social media concerning a marriage that has broken down now this issue made it to the news because the two people involved are two famous somewhat in the limelight people i'm talking about the former minister of aviation femi fanny Kayode, popularly known as ffk and his now estrangled wife precious chikwendu now femi fanny Kayode, i think we'll just stick with ffk so i don't bite off my tongue now ffk is a former minister of aviation and he has some history but let us not go right let us not go deep into his political history his um money laundering charges his arrest by efcc and all those dirty things that happened in his tenure and after his tenure as a politician in nigeria today we're talking about something more personal and family oriented now before this marriage news broke out as if to say his chi said it is time for the world to see this man few days back before the saga of the marriage he was in the news for yet another bad reason he was seen on live television on camera verbally assaulting a journalist if you haven't seen that video he even admitted on his own that he has a short fuse now if you haven't seen that video let me just play it very briefly watch Look, i'm saying this on live tv what no put put that thing now let me address what type of stupid question is that what type of stupid question is that bankrolling who do you know who you are talking to bank i will not take any questions from this man what type of insulting question is that do what who can give me money for anything who do you think you are talking to please don't insult me here okay. very stupid i could see from your face before you got here how stupid you are don't ever talk to me like that do you think you're talking to you have a small mind very small mind i've been in politics since 1990 i've been locked up how many times by this government suffered i spend i don't take and i'm not a poor man i've never been and i'll never be. bankroll who a former minister a lawyer don't ever try that with me again no don't please you see me well don't ever all right i have a short fuse okay wow do you know who i am typical politicians words in nigeria who made them who they are well let's not go into that now let me talk about the history of this marriage so you can appreciate very well where i'm coming from my perspective and why i am going to give things out the way i'm going to give it in this video in 2014 news of their marriage broke out on social media and trust me everybody a lot of people were taken aback now considering the age difference of these two people of these two couples i'm talking about ffk and his now a strong wife precious ffk was born in 1960 what does that make him how many years does that make him do the mathematics and precious was just in her early 20s i mean this man had children that were older and are still older than her now so many people came up with their theories some said that ffk needed a young beautiful wife to bear him sons because he didn't have a son at, the, at that moment why on the woman's part people were alleging that these young women that is just one of these marriages of these young women looking to hook up a wealthy affluent man who would pay their bills and give them a life of comfort well we might never know but let's go on now this marriage was a typical social media kind of marriage i mean there were lots and lots of 
public display of affection. Chiwe Chim Precious was always posting the man, what he did, how he caters to her, her life of comfort and luxury on social media. And FFK, on the other hand, too, was always posting. In fact, just not too long ago, about two weeks ago, I was on Twitter and I saw a post he made about how he established an NGO for his wife and how his wife is the best thing that has ever happened to him. You know, that kind of marriage that would make you sit at home and be like, oh my God, God, when? Couple goals. Yeah, that was the kind of marriage that existed between FFK and Precious. Now, before we forget a very important part of this discussion, Precious Chikwendo was neither the first nor the second, nor the third wife of FFK. She was, as a matter of fact, his fourth wife. Would it interest you again if I told you that, that the marriage between FFK and these three previous wives didn't end because of a spouse died or something, ha or something happened? None of these wives passed on or died as to say, okay, that is the reason why the marriage came to an end. All three previous marriages before Precious Chikwendo ended in an outright divorce. And not just a divorce, on the same allegation of domestic violence as Precious is alleging now. He married the first wife in 1987, they divorced in 1990, that was a three year marriage. He married the second one in 1991, and they got the divorce in 1995. Guys, that is a four, that was a four year marriage. He then went ahead to marry the third wife. I think we could give him the crown of a serial Maria, right? I wouldn't be wrong to call him a serial Maria. This man had five daughters from these three previous women before he married Precious, the last one, who we are discussing about now. Now, this man has a taste for women with class and influence. Don't be deceived to think that because he's a man of influence, you know, the whole Nollywood thing, he must have gone to a poor woman to marry, for he fell in love with a woman, an indignant woman. No, this man targets women who are in his class. These three previous women before Chikwendo, Precious, were older, more matured, more affluent, more enlightened than Precious Chikwendo. And all three of them came out with the same allegation of domestic violence that FFK beats them, physically abuses them. I know that we, don't, we do not judge or shame anybody here, but trust me, I am very moved to ask. I am very, very curious to know what drives women who have seen that a man has been previously married several times and the ex-wives come out with the same story, what drives these women to marry these men? I often wonder, I never stop wondering, I have never been able to decipher how it doesn't repel or scare women to marry men who have had two, three, four wives before them. Now, I'm not talking about something like, okay, fine, we say the African culture, a man is free to marry a number of wives, just like the Alafi of Oyo or the Oni of Ife, where they have still, and these wives are still married to them. That's different. These women are still married to them. The Alafi of Oyo has many wives. He says he has up to five, five wives, beautiful young women. They all are still married to him. That is a different case. I'm talking about where a man is married to a woman after two years, she runs away, the marriage breaks, he marries the other one, the other one runs away, he marries the third one, the marriage breaks. What gives women the confidence to marry such a man without a red flag being raised? Or without you asking yourself questions? Do they ever ask themselves, why didn't it work out between this man and all these women? And why do I think that it is me that it's going to work out with? How possible is it that the problem in that marriage was with all the women except that man and not that man. Don't they ever ask that in a culture as peculiar as ours where we still shame divorcees, we still look at them like failures, like women that couldn't you know, keep a marriage, you know the African syndrome of a divorcee. 
And these women were able to dem the consequences, dem the shame, and still leave a young, affluent man. Doesn't that raise any kind of suspicion? Maybe these women that marry these men that have been previously married to three, four, five wives before them are under the illusion that they can change the man. Or once there's money, you can tolerate anything. You can bear anything. Oh, no problem. He can hit me as long as after hitting me, he gives me a brand new car. They never appreciate the severity of such a situation until they live through it. There is a Yoruba adage that says that the whip that was used to flog the first wife is the same whip that will be used to flog the second. But women do not just want to hear this. Now, given, now back to the issue, given all the allegations of domestic violence, if you were thinking that marrying a young, beautiful wife who, who gave him four sons under a six-year marriage period, this lady gave this man four handsome, adorable sons, one boy and another set of triplets. If you were thinking that that was going to change the story and rewrite the history and make everything go away and make this man to become the ideal husband now drama broke out on social media on the 17th of september that this fairy tale marriage between precious chikwendu and ffk has broken down on the allegation of domestic violence just as all his previous marriages this lady this beautiful this ex-beauty queen precious claimed that her husband used to batter her and beat her even in pregnancy, even when she was heavily pregnant for her triplets. That is shocking. As in, what would ever, if this was true, what would ever drive a man to beat up a pregnant woman, his pregnant wife? I have never understood how anybody can be able to beat up a pregnant person. On the woman's side, the word against her, or the word that allegedly against her is that she is a psychotic mentally unstable woman who once pulled a knife on her husband guys we might never know the truth we might never know the very truth and what actually went on in that marriage we might have to wait for the courts to decide on their fate but let us decide but let us critically analyze everything that has happened so you can learn, I can learn, and we can be aware. First, there are allegations that FFK has confiscated all the stuff he bought for her, all the material things, things the cars, the luxury that he got for her in when they were married or when things were going fine. My question is, why would any sane person, why would a sane man take back the gifts that he bought for his own wife during the subsistence of a marriage why would he want to retrieve such a gift? I'm very sure that in that marriage, the woman also made several sacrifices that she cannot take back. Her time, her efforts, her advices, the cooking, the sacrifices, the children, the sex, the love, so many other things that are intangible, that cannot be touched, that she also gave in that marriage. I've never understood why a marriage would break and a man will start retrieving or a woman will start retrieving what she got or what he got for her spouse when they were married. That is the height of childishness for me. And that brings me to this advice before I forget. Ladies and gentlemen, what is not in your name? What is not legally written in your name is not yours. Don't kid yourself. Don't deceive yourself. Your husband says he bought you a car. But the car documents, the car papers are in his name. Sweetheart, he just borrowed you that car. He can retrieve it whenever he wants it because he is the rightful owner of that property. You and your husband save to buy a house or to build a house and the house papers, the property papers, bears Mr. Okafo. Are you joking? Or the, 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 the papers bear Mr. and Mrs. Okafo. Who exactly is Mr. and Mrs. Okafo? Who is Mrs. Okafo? Do you know that you realize that there could be another Mrs. Okafo after you that could claim she is the Mrs. Okafo? We have to use our head here. So what happens when you cease to be Mrs. Okafo tomorrow? Well, if life happens, life can happen no matter how perfect anything is. Life can happen. 
And if you follow life with that approach, that life can happen, you'll be more careful about one or two, about some things. For the avoidance of doubt, the proper way to title assets or properties jointly owned by spouses is Mr. Chike Okafo and Mrs. Chika Okafo. That shows joint ownership and that shows individuality in ownership. Not Mr. and Mrs. Okafo because tomorrow you may cease to be Mrs. Okafo. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm not inciting you to go cause trouble, to tell your spouse to start changing the document. No, but it's important for me to tell you the true position of them because as a lawyer and as a banker, there are some things that I might have seen and experienced that you may not have. Now, there's also news that FFK has confiscated her children. She hasn't been able to see her children in months. Of course, we all know that that is the quickest way to kill a woman. When you keep a woman out of her children, it's as good as killing her. On that note, I think it's rather unfortunate that in the 21st century, things like this can still happen in Nigeria. With money, with influence, with power, you can have the law, you can intimidate people, you can have the law work for you. It's unfortunate. You can silence the authorities. It's unfortunate. Now, in case you do not know, the only body or institution that has a right to determine so custodianship of children from a marriage is the courts. No man or no woman has the right to exclusively confiscate a child that was born out of a marriage. Even if they are no longer together and the marriage has broken down irretrievably, I think it is only fair and right for them to share joint custodianship of those children. Not just for their sake, but for the mental stability and balance of those children. Any woman that keeps her children away from the true father of those children, and you think you want to, you want to use the children as a tool to repay or to express bitterness, or as a tool of war, you use your children, you are not only damaging yourself, you are damaging those children. And so goes for the man. Because all things being equal, Children need the presence and the impute of both parents. Except the other spouse is irresponsible or is negligent or is not interested in parenting. But if the other spouse is interested, there is no need, there is no justification to keep a child away from their mother or their father. Because a woman who is a bad wife can be the best mom. And a man who is a bad husband can be a good father. So do not judge your relationship, the relationship you have with your spouse and interpret it to the relationship that he would have to his child or her child. Now, if, let me assume, I'm not taking sides here. As I said earlier, I do not know the intricates of what happened or the truths or true position of everything that happened. So I'm not apportioning blames. But if, if it is true, if these allegations of domestic violence is true, I want to applaud that lady for stepping out, for sacrificing everything, the comforts, everything, the affluence, the name, her pride, her shame, and leaving that marriage. It is not an easy thing to walk out of a marriage, especially in a country as judgmental as Nigeria. I even applaud her for leaving her children first to, 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 to be alive. Because when you are dead, you cannot be dead and be a mother. You have to be alive to be a mother. You have to be alive to be a wife. So when you are in a situation that threatens your existence or your life, the first thing you should think about is how to save your life. Do not say, I am staying because of the children. Because when you are gone, those children will have no mother. So you end up losing on both sides. We were all aware of the, of the news that broke out last week of the Ghanaian pastor that murdered his own wife in cold blood. That woman is neither a life, nor a wife, nor a mom. She is none. So I want to applaud that lady for the boldness to walk away from an abusive marriage. Domestic violence is not a topic that should be treated with rubber, rubber gloves. It is very serious. Women and men lose their lives every day to domestic violence and if it were insane crimes in more developed countries this allegation will be taken seriously and investigation would be would, would commence 
to ensure that at the root of this is cut into. But hey, this is Nigeria. With money, with influence, with connection, everything would work for you. It is so sad. My stomach churns at the knowledge of the fact that even if this man actually is an abusive spouse, as his four previous wives have alleged, that women like you and I would still walk into a marriage with this same man without batting an eyelid. He would still go ahead to marry the fifth wife, the sixth wife, the seventh wife. How low can women get? How low can we get women? All in the name of answering a missus. You see a man with such a history, you don't fear for your life just because you want to have a band or you want to have a life of affluence, you walk into a marriage with such a person. It is sad. I really hope, I really pray that this allegation of domestic violence is just a rumor. And if there's any challenge between Precious Chikwendo and FFK, I pray that it is just a husband and wife clash that we all experience once in a while in marriage. And I pray that they come back together. But if it's indeed domestic violence, I really, really hope that justice is served. Because as long as men and women are abusing their spouses with no repercussion and no judgments, that practice will remain a thing in this country. So thank you so much guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Do drop in the comment section what you think about this whole saga. If you're not subscribed, don't forget to hit the subscribe icon. I know that you're going to love it here, you're going to learn a lot here, and you're going to enjoy your stay here. It's me, your girl Barista Neze, and this is Neze Bill. See you in my next video. For now, bye.